the most common questions we've had in recent months is where in the world are we getting these tires? These are uh, Pirelli CN36s. They're of a vintage fill without a vintage cost. So where are we getting them? Well, we're getting them out of England from a place called Longstone, Longstone Tire. And the thing about it is, is these tires are actually remarkably inexpensive compared to what you could be paying for a vintage looking tire. Obviously vintage looking tires tend to be on a much lower production run so therefore they tend to cost more. These being Pirelli's no less makes it a little extra sexy for us to have them. This is very similar to what you would have had on your car when it was originally sold in the United States or in Europe for that matter. Anyway, so effectively this tire sizing is as close to the size of what would have been on your car and now we're going to stretch this over a 14 by 7 aluminum GTA replica wheel. Now, a lot is to be said about the wheels you use, not only for the style and the, and the overall appearance of the car, but it also should take into consideration cost of tires long run. More so than that, you should the riding experience has an awful lot to do with this. And this is one of those questions we get an awful lot of, of requests for. Here's the hook on that. The taller the profile, the softer the experience. It doesn't mean it's compromising and handling. It just means the softer the compliance will be on the driving experience. So if you're uh, one of those boy racers and you love to have those super shorty springs and rigid suspension and, and all those things, you might want to consider a taller tire to help yield some of that, that brutality that you're experiencing in that, in that car. Whereas if you run a shorter profile, wider tire, there's a couple things you need to consider. Wider tire, yes, more the grip. However, it's more stress on the body of the car. If the car is not prepped for that level of stress, if you're, especially if you're pushing it into the bends, you're probably going to start getting some stress fatigues in the chassis. We see it all the time, and I do mean all the time. Whereas the narrower the tire, granted, it doesn't have as much grip level to it, but it does still have good quality handling characteristics. So this is a, a 185-70 14 tire. So it is not quite as wide as what a lot of you're running in those, you know, 195 or 205s, and you're stuffing them inside the, the wheel wells trying to make it all work for yourself. This is going to give it that classic bulbous look. Now all the wheels you just saw that we've, uh, we shot prior to putting this on, they all have their own interesting values. Now we have some original Millimilets over there that are extremely rare, the 14.7s. Um, in fact, I don't know of another 14.7 set out there. I've seen 14.6s, but not 7s. So that's a very rare wheel. So we're dog that set of wheels for a very special build. But then you see the traditional 15-inch version of the GTA, which, you know, a, a lot of you run. But it does limit the height of the tire you can get away with and still have it fit under your car. And then the 14 inch has its counter problems because it's a lower production wheel these days. Tires tend to be a bit more expensive and limited in choices. So with that said, this is a 14.7 raw aluminum wheel. Basically all this wheel is, is they take the 14.7s and they lightly blast the, the original powder coating of that, that, that shiny metallic paint that's on there. They blast that off and it's a raw look. That raw look translates very close to what a brand new set of GTA magnesium wheels would look like. Now, being a raw look, I'm not an advocate for you putting that directly on your car. Odds are that because that metal is now porous, brake dust and things like that are going to dinge those out pretty quickly. But I do like that raw look. So we spray what's called motorcycle clear coat over these. It's a matte finish. It doesn't change the, uh, the, the gl uh, gloss or lack of gloss of the wheel, but it does at least fill in the pore so brake dust can't build up on them. Anyway, so these are going on to what we're calling the Quasi-TI Super Project. And uh, let's get started. Now, I already put the valve stem in, and the wheels are obviously already uh, painted. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Being a little fragile more so than normal with these wheels. So now I'm putting in solid steel stems instead of rubber. No rhyme, no reason to it. I just like them, and I think it uh, kind of gives the, the wheel a little more of a race prep experience to it, if you will. So anyway, I'm being a little gingerly handling on these wheels because I did just uh, put the clear coat on them last night, and it's been fairly cold. So you got to assume that the paint's a little bit soft. I'm not going to kid you. Stuffing a uh, 185-70 wheel onto a 7-inch width rim can be a little tricky. But the thing you can't get away from is how cool that bulbous vintage look is when it's done. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. That's pretty badass, isn't it? Now this might seem a little bit of the uh, carriage before the horse concept, but what I'm doing is I'm putting the wheels we plan on using on this car now so I can set the ride height because one of the last things I want to be dealing with as we're building this car is adjusting the suspension later. So right now we're just setting the deck height of everything so we're okay there. Because if I need to modify fender wells or anything for the tire concept I'm approaching, now would be time to know that instead of way down the road. Anyway, so these are the, 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 the raw 14.7s with the Pirelli CN36 tires from uh, Longstone Tire in England. Nice thing about it is these things are just a little bit over 100 bucks a piece and shipping's free. So anyway, with that said, finally have an opportunity to use my oh-so-rare Campanella Yellow Lug Nuts. I've, I got several sets of these. Uh, they've become increasingly harder and harder to find. And uh, why not? I have a vintage looking tire, vintage looking wheel, use a vintage looking lug nut. That's a nice little additional touch that you just never see. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to assess whether this head gasket on this particular car is leaking or not. We've had some overheating issues with it and it hasn't really been obvious what the problem was. So anyway, there is a relatively simple test you can do and it is called a leak down check and, excuse me, a leak check. And effectively what you do is you put the special solution in here and if there is any kind of a head gasket leak it is going to change the color of this product. So essentially what you do is you make sure you got enough clearance in there because you don't want to suck up any radiator fluid. You put it in there and you slowly pump it a couple times. And it maintained blue. This is a highly sensitive product. If this had turned yellow, that means there's carbon monoxide in there, which means the head gasket is leaking. But as of right now, that is still quite blue. I'm gonna do it a couple more times just to make sure. Now, if this product did turn colors, then we would shut the motor off and we would do what's called a major leak down check, which we would repeat this process without the motor running. And if it 
turned uh, yellow then, that means that head gasket is completely blown. Even the most subtle of leaks, this would have picked it up. It's actually good news and bad news all at the same time, because now we still don't know why this thing's overheating. Okay, so it is effectively late February, edge of March right now. And the gip, the big game plan we got going on is, is we're going to co-build a card, kind of showcase a few things for you. One, uh, we're going to call this not a restoration, but a rolling refresh. How's that? And we're doing this in conjunction with uh, the folks over at Centerline. And essentially what we're doing is some of the stuff that we just kind of alluded to. Um, we're going to uh, upgrade a motor. I don't trust the motor that's in this. It has this unusual uh, overheating at times situation. Uh, now, back in the day, what was kind of commonplace was is if you changed a head gasket, you're supposed to put a lead additive into the block. That was a uh, textbook maneuver. And my hunch is something like that has happened. Um, either way, uh, the motor seems to be quite good but in the end of the day i don't know where that unusual overheating is coming from and i'm not going to spend time trying to chase it down we know the head gas is not uh busted because we tested it so we're going to just bell on this motor and do something slightly more exotic what's nice about it is is that it is going to be all altitudes uh conditional change and the reason i bring that up is because in august where you're going to drive this car in whatever state it is in from here in the Seattle, Washington area, all the way down to LA and back just to show how reliable these things can be when sensible, smart upgrades are done. So the motor that we are gonna put in, again, is another two liter. All we're gonna do is, is we're gonna get involved with a center line, showcase some of their featured parts and put it on this. This car is not going to be restored, but it is gonna have a few appointments done to it. We'll have the interior upgraded with our new concept seats that we're uh, designing in house. Uh, we're going to showcase a few parts from Center Line, the things that they like, uh, that they want to uh, show that are incredibly impressive. And we're all going to put it together and just make this a sensible drive. Now, this car is like just about every other car that's in the shop. Right now, we have over 60 cars in the shop, and every last one of them at some point in time has probably suffered similar to what this car has. As you saw earlier in the shots, the front end of this car is nothing but body filler. So we are going to pull the, the, the paint and material off this car, fix the metal, and just respray what we have repaired. We're not going to replace everything and respray everything on this car. So by August, the little things like the blistering in the back, that'll probably still be there, depending on how much time we have on this. And we're approaching this from the same way you would approach it at home. We don't have seven days a week to deal with this. It's only going to be what we can accomplish on the weekends. So from this time up to August, what we can accomplish on the weekends will be done to this. And in turn, this is going to be whatever it's going to be for that drive. So we're treating it just like it was at your house. That car back there you just saw, for a multitude of reasons, we're not going to use the motor that's in it. But for starters, we're going to use the motor in this. This motor was built not too long ago by a friend of mine, and I guess the project went south. Uh, I'm not really sure what the story was, but this was actually a very good motor. It's a really nice running 2-liter motor. However, not willing to leave well enough alone, we are going to jazz it up a little bit. This is the motor we're going to use to do the, uh, the high-tech speaker fill injection uh, system that we're going to put in the Quasi-TI. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to put a 1969 Alfa Romeo pedal assembly in this so I can run a hydraulic clutch. Why 69 hydraulic clutch setup? I shall show you. 
this is a 1969, put the coffee down. This is a 1969 pedal assembly. Obviously these are rare as hen's teeth. But what makes this unique is this piece right here. This goes through the sub chassis rail, it's right there. That way you can run the hydraulic clutch coming off of here, then the lines go back over to the cross member where you can engage a hydraulic uh, transmission. Um, anyway, these are uh, becoming incredibly difficult to find anymore, so that makes their value substantially higher. This is the easiest way to introduce a hydraulic clutch system into the, the early uh, mechanical transmission cars. And so anyway, there's a lot of values with that, and that is a decision somebody has to make on their own. However, one thing they'll have to definitely make a decision on is are they willing to do the expense because buying this particular used pedal assembly, if somebody knows what they have, they're going to charge you an arm and a leg for it, especially to have all the, the, the parts to come with it. Anyway, so we're gonna be putting this in quasi-TI with this motor and a very high tech looking but yet classic looking fuel injection system. So the build begins officially now. Okay, so I do realize this is probably a little bit of a different thing for a lot of you to process, but this is what we have. The Quasi TI is uh, getting a significant upgrade in performance. What you have here, the Rizzo carburetors, quite frankly, pretty much past it. Now I'm gonna restore those and we'll put those on the shelf for our customer later on down the road. But we're effectively putting in a two liter motor that's gonna be fuel injected, but it's gonna have massive power and very reliable power band. More importantly, because the maiden trip of this car is going to be coming from here in the Seattle area all the way down to LA and back. I mean, there's a lot of altitude change. And with fuel injection, I don't have to worry about jet selections and all these other little things you have to consider when taking a carbureted car over high altitudes. Anyway, so in this particular case, this is what we're going with. This is an early style manifold, which I happen to have. And then these are the throttle bodies that we're using. It's kind of the best of both worlds if you think about it because now I can run a really high performance speak of fuel injected system and yet have something that looks like carburetors bolted onto the manifold. Now with that said, what you just saw was the uh, high pressure, high intensity lines that we now can use instead of the, the traditional speaker ones which quite frankly are very functional but they're not very good looking. So with the new lines that we get that are flexible, they can be put into position and not be so intrusive looking and more importantly it cleans up that entire side of the engine so you're not looking at so many complicated items. Um, which is a part of the, for all intents and purposes, the, the takeaway of the aesthetics of fuel injection systems on these early alphas. Anyway, this is what we're going with. And as we get to developing this motor, you'll see how this works. Okay, so we've never made any uh, implications of how cherry this car is or was. This entire front end is nothing body filler. And we're going to fix that. And that's all going to be sorted out. But this thing was punched at some point in time pretty significantly in the front. We got a lot of infrastructure work that we have to do, but the one thing you can see that is greatly in poor shape is this inner fender. It's crushed, which means all this is pushed back because this should be smooth and quite all this should be quite forward than what it is. But because you saw what we're putting in here, we're putting in these uh, dual 45 TWM fill injected uh, um, uh, system for this car. It needs air. It needs quality air. Okay, so what we're going to do, instead of the inner headlights on this, these will still fit behind the grill. We're using these. They'll sit in there like so. Okay, you kind of get a sense of how that's going to look. And the other one's going to be over here. Kind of get how that looks? That is going to be a nice, nice look. Can't wait for it. The nice thing about these is they have this funneling taper effect so I can get a hose system 
just to get slightly past the radiator so I can get a clean shot of air straight into the fill injectors. But I'm really liking how that looks. Can't fit it in because that metal's so busted up. Ah. 